Hey, today we are looking at this terminology of east-west versus north-south network traffic. This is something that you might have occasionally come across when reading about setting up data centers, setting up networks, and this is something that also confuses me every once in a while. So let's take a moment to clarify that. If you consider how network diagrams were drawn earlier, there used to be the segmentation of different layers. So one of those layers used to be the uh, representation of the internal data center, right? And there will be multiple machines that were internal to one data center. Then there will be all the machines and devices and all of that that were external to the data center. And that was uh, shown on an other horizontal layer. So if it was a mobile going via an ISP or a bunch of machines that were directly communicating with the data center from, say, a, a private data center, that would be on a layer laid on top of it. So any traffic that is going from uh, these external devices, they fall, uh, they go from a you know, top-down approach. Right? They flow from the top towards the bottom. And any traffic, uh, say, between applications that are within this data center, between virtual machines that are within the data center, they go horizontally, you know, uh, left-right direction. And with that clear now, it is very uh, easy to understand where the concept of north-south traffic and east-west traffic comes from. So if there is any traffic that is coming from devices that are external to the data center and it is uh, entering the, uh, the data center that is under consideration, say the public data center you're working with, or if it is exiting that and going to the outside world, then that is considered north-south traffic. And any traffic that is between machines within the data center, it would be considered east-west traffic. So uh, it's fairly easy to understand um, where this terminology comes from once you understand how these networks were originally laid out. Now, uh, a little more detail. On the north-south traffic itself, you might even hear things like southbound traffic. So that would be traffic that is entering a data center and northbound traffic would be those which are exiting a data center, right? So this one that I've indicated here would be southbound, right? And if it was exiting from the data center and going outside, then it would be northbound. Um, and it's as simple as that, right? Not so traffic within that southbound, northbound, and there is east-west traffic. Now, there are a couple of considerations on this also. Traditionally, east-west traffic, that is a traffic within the data center itself, um, is, uh, is considered safer, right? Because you kind of have this assumption that within the periphery, within the perimeter of what we have, our building, our set of devices, there is going to be automatic security than things that are coming from outside. So usually stricter security policies are applied for traffic that is north-south traffic, uh, especially one that is southbound, um, than for traffic that is going within the network itself. So east-west traffic is inherently trusted in many cases. And um, since it is within the data center itself, there might be less uh, security policies that are applied. Now, of course, these days, security is, is a very big priority, especially when it comes to the public cloud. And even east-west traffic, the traffic that is within the data center is scrutinized for security. Uh, on this, I have a separate video called, um, titled the Zero Trust Model. So do check that, uh, which is very important nowadays. Um, there is an additional question here on what happens when there are multiple data centers, right? So for example, in this case, let's say there is one uh, data center or one region, you know, from a public cloud and another one that is elsewhere, right? So this is clear on the traffic that is coming from external devices or from, you know, external mobiles and computers, all of that would be not so traffic. But what about the traffic that is going between these data centers? On this, there could be a couple of different views, right? In certain public clouds, what you would see is that they don't have their own complete private network. So there might be data leaving one data center, entering the public network, and then re-entering the other data center, right? So this would still be considered north south traffic because it is exiting the data center and then re-entering it. On the other hand, uh, Google has its own fully private uh, network backbone. So once you enter the Google network, uh, the data that travels between data centers is still going to be on its own private network, right? So in the case of Google Cloud, you would consider it still east-west traffic. Uh, as I said, you need to check which cloud provider um, 
if they have a complete private network backbone or not. Right. And to the extent that I know about Google Cloud, it does not go on the uh, public network once it enters the Google network itself. Right. And only, of course, when it responds to consumers, then, of course, it has to go back to the uh, public network. So uh, on the overall use of the terminology itself, I'm not a big fan of saying north-south traffic, east-west traffic, southbound, northbound and all that. Right. Um, it used to make sense at one point in time. Today, it's a lot more confusing. Um, one, of course, because there are multiple data centers and different clouds have a different approach because, you know, the network itself might not be private to them. They might have to enter uh, the public network and then re-enter back into a private network. So it's confusing in general and also for those diagrams in which these things are laid out horizontally, you know, where you say the network is, traffic is coming sideways, say, for example, the mobile device here and then the data center there. You, it will be north-south uh, traffic, but then, uh, you know, it will be represented horizontally and that becomes uh, uh, that becomes confusing for users. So, I would say try to avoid that in any kind of literature or any kind of conversation you have. But if you come across this uh, term in uh, any existing documentation, this is what it means. A better way of talking about this such traffic would be, uh, say, calling it ingress and egress, right? That entering a certain network perimeter, a certain network boundary uh, would be ingress and that leaving that would be egress. And there is no particular definition of what this boundary is, right? It could be the entire data center, it could be a VPC, uh, it could be the whole of Google Cloud itself because certain services within Google Cloud are global, right? Uh, so um, it doesn't matter where it enters, as soon as it enters into your VPC, it's still going to be uh, across the world and still um, and so it's going to remain within the VPC itself, right? All internal traffic is going to remain within the private network. So uh, a better way of talking about data entering and leaving or better terminology would be to use ingress and egress. And you define what is the boundary there and at which point is it going to be ingress and where is it going to be egress. If you find these videos useful, consider supporting me on Patreon or buy me a coffee. Also. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more learning videos on Awesome GCP.